1025 AD, a country's navy was rapidly moving towards Southeast Asian countries in the Indian Ocean. At that time there was the Srivijaya Empire which was made up of today's Indonesia and the Malay Peninsula. And this navy was of Chola Emperor Rajendra I. Why did the Indian King Rajendra I attack the Srivijaya Kingdom? This was a unique event in Indian history. Earlier Indians had very good relations with Srivijaya. Students used to come to Indian universities to study there. In 1006 AD, the king of Srivijaya had got Buddhist Vihara built by donation in the Chola Kingdom. The situations due to which the decision to this attack was taken are quite interesting. To understand this whole incident, we have to swim in the Indian Ocean. No. Literally we don't have to swim. At present, what we call the Indian Ocean is spread from here to here. India is in the center. India looked something like this 998 years ago. At this time, even though India was culturally and religiously a unit, politically there were many independent states, one of which was the Chola Empire. In the 11th century, Chinese ports had become important centers for international trade and the Cholas had trade relations with them. According to the demand of the market, products from India were exported there. Geographically, India was in between these two civilizations, Egyptian and Chinese. Indian traders used to play an important role in the trade of these three places. Most Indians used to handle export-import activities on this route. Till 1025 AD, India's southwestern, southeastern and north Sri Lanka were under the Chola Empire. That means the Cholas had the maximum share of this business. This route of the Malacca Strait was essential for the entire trade system. This entire area was under the control of the Srivijaya Empire at that time. Where now they have started taking advantage of their monopoly. Srivijaya was a rich state and its navy was strong. This was the general opening from where Indian ships used to enter this strait and here Srivijaya had two important ports, Akai and Kita. They had kept the maximum fleet of their navy here in Kita. Whichever ship entered this strait, they were forcefully stopped, a heavy tax was demanded from them, and if they did not pay, they were looted. This practice greatly disturbed the Chola's trade with Egypt and China. Rajendra Chola's economy was dependent on this trade. To secure this trade route and to end these disturbances, in 1025 AD, he sent his navy to maritime Southeast Asia. By the 11th century, the Chola navy had become strong and comparatively developed. He made a great strategy. Their navy did not take entry into the strait through this general opening. Instead, Chola navy reached directly Baris port on Sumatra's west coast. While traveling south from here, they came to Sunda Strait. Here was Srivijaya's capital Palembang, the first attack was made on the capital. The coming of the Cholas from the backside was unexpected. Cholas easily defeated the shocked Sri Vijians. King Sangram Vijayatungavarman was captured. A huge amount of gold and coins were recovered from here. Then one by one all the 14 important ports of Shivaji were won very fast. For this war, the Cholas studied the monsoon winds. The perfect time was chosen and made their war strategy according to the direction of the winds. With whose help Srivijaya could not stand in front of the movement of their fast ships. Srivijaya's naval forces could neither take help from each other nor could they re-attack. In the last defeating the strongest fleet of Kita, the Cholas ended the Srivijaya monopoly from the region and completely secured the trade route. The region remained geographically unchanged even after the invasion because the Cholas did not keep political control there, no king was killed, and their representative was not left there. Cholas came, attacked, collected coins and gold and returned. After this war, Indian business community became powerful in the region, trade route became favorable for Cholas. And in this way, Indian culture flourished again in Southeast Asia. Like and share the video if you find it interesting and do not forget to subscribe to the channel to learn such interesting facts.